Okay, so so much for that idea. The streaming seems to be getting cut off. I don't know if it's something that I'm saying or just random glitching. It's been happening to me every day lately. So I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get away with live streaming. They keep cutting me off. And so I'll try to make a recording and then maybe I'll just put in a normal video if it works. We'll see if that works. I wanted to talk a little bit more about Matthew Perry. I didn't get a chance to finish about Ford, that he wasn't elected vice president, nor was he elected as president. He was just inserted, right? Maybe one of the benefits of being a 33rd degree master mason. And once he was in the Oval Office, he was raised to some of the other types of masonry, high places in their rights as well, the French version, and maybe some of the others. A very interesting character, very well loved. I never saw somebody step in. He ste when he stepped in, not as president, but just as VP, he had the most massive standing ovation of the entire floor of the House and the Senate that I've ever seen, both sides of the aisle. Amazing character. And, you know, Michigan represented at that time so much of what America was about. Our conceptions of America were the auto industry in a big way. It was still like that, you know. And that was when uh, my hometown, Flint, was Car City. It wasn't, it still, maybe it wasn't, it wasn't yet, a, it wasn't yet quite destroyed, you know. It was still, um, there was still a lot of energy there. And Detroit, too. I mean, Motor City, right? Detroit was Motor City. People came from all around the world to work there, to join in the automotive boom, you know? So anyhow, uh, when it comes to this story about Perry, I just I just wanted to uh, dedicate something to him. It, it affected me in some way, hearing about his story whether it's drug addiction as it's claimed here, which I'm sure it is. It seemed he was he was uh, dealing with drug addictions for so many years, right? So many years. I noticed that certain things lately, like on the, the date where we had the July 13th, I noticed that just before he, the shot, where shots were heard to ring out, just like a couple of sentence or two before that happened, Trump had mentioned 93, 93 or 93, and that's, that has to do with Crowley. That is one of the ways that you say, it's one of the greetings and the goodbyes. You can just reduce it by just saying 93, right? Instead of saying, uh, love shall be the law and all that stuff and love under will and all those statements for the Thelemites and others. So we saw a reference there from Trump to Crowley and Thelemites, Thelema, all right? And it has to do with modern, what we might consider modern Satanism or Prometheism or however you want to look at it, right? So, um, 93. And so we heard that recently in other locations, too, when we watched this video from... I'm jumping around a little bit, but I don't know how else I'm going to make my points. We watched this video. We have protesting nuns here. Well, we watched a video called... Um, an Interview with the Devil. Not this one, though. Not this one. No, I guess it's just not popular enough just from that. I saw this little movie, by the way. But no, I'm looking for Interview with the Devil. Lady Babylon. Here we go. Meet Satan. Interview with Lucifer, he has it titled here. But in other places I saw it. Interview with the interview with the devil or interview with Satan. Anyways, the nun of Nazareth. Now we just heard about the nuns when we were talking about used cars. Protesting nuns, right? It's interesting. 
And also what I was trying to get to was that uh, Dr. Armand Hillman here. Oh, geez. Going to have to close those windows. But Dr. Armand Hillman here references 93% repeatedly. So this lets us know what we're talking about. We're talking about this type of this type of Satanism, we're talking about Crowleyism to a great degree. The nod right at the front, right at the front of it to Crowley. All right, and that is the 93. When you hear that, just let that, you know, let it ring a bell for you, okay? So when I was looking at this, I noticed like this shows, I noticed little things in numbers. Like for example, this guy was on, uh, he was in, the biggest thing for me was his voice of Benny in the video game Fallout New Vegas. So I tried to show that in the video clip that I did. Hopefully you saw that. He was crying in the rain. He, he His voice, he was saying, you're crying in the rain, Pally. Right? before he shoots the courier and buries him alive. Now, that's the same story, but with a female lead in uh, Kill Bill. When our bride, our girl, the bride, right? She's uh, shot in the head and, and eventually buried alive. Same storyline, just like what happened in this fall at New Vegas where the primary character... You know, he uh, he is shot in the head and buried alive. Same deal. I showed it, but I'll try to show it again, just in case. Crying in the rain, Pally. And he says the exact words. You're crying in the rain. Crying in the rain, Pally. Now that's Matthew Perry. waking up over here. This is Matthew Perry here, dressed as Kurt Russell's character from Used Cars. Time to cash out. Will you get it over with? Maybe cons kill people without looking them in the face. But I ain't a fink, dig? You've made your last delivery, kid. Sorry you got twisted up in this scene. So as the guy's burying uh, the, the bride, I think the guy's name was Bud, who's burying her and he was like too bad this had to go this way I got nothing against you then he buries her alive same deal so you know this is an important theme of all these great directors were playing on the theme they were playing to it it was, it was a significant theme look how many movies uh, oh what's his name Tarantula or Tar Tar Tarantino how many movies he made with that character, right? Well, maybe it was just two, but still, they were pretty big movies, major. And we're hammering on the same theme. And I see that theme, and I saw that theme when I was with Persian Magi. Persian Magi was ever, always talking about how they buried the goddess. They, they essentially killed her, or they buried her alive. Right? the theme of Kill Bill, to my way of thinking, particularly, I think it was Kill Bill 2, where she's buried alive. First she's shot in the head at the wedding in Texas, somewhere not too far from the Alamo, actually. And then, in part two, she's buried alive. Now she gets out, of course, but it's just interesting. So here we go with Kurt Russell's character here as something like Benny. Ford, Chrysler, General Motors will be your headstone. High volume, high visibility will be your epitaph. Rest in peace, Luke. <laughs> Burying them. From where you're 
So I guess it's obvious that this concept seems to have to do with the devil as well. Like if you think of Prometheus, buried under a mountain or chained up. They often say chained inside the mountain, right? It's not necessarily at the top of the mountain. But there's different storylines here. But yeah, it's there's a Prometheus devil character that is inside of the mountain. And it is also feminine. It can be female or male, clearly like a Lucifer character. Female or male, so you're going to get both sides of that storyline. You know, I suppose it's no different than the underworld with Hades and you have Persephone down there becoming the queen of the underworld. Which one is really in charge? You can't really tell. They, they alternate because the sexuality of these deities seems to alternate or fluctuate either way. At least that's how I look at it. You got your dark goddess and you got your light goddess. The same goddess, ultimately, the way I think. Just different aspects. Kneeling must seem like an 18 karat run of bad luck. Truth is, the game was rigged from the start. <laughs> Alright, so that, that kind of made my point uh, as far as the connections to some degree, I hope. So Virgo is that constellation, that virgin maiden associated with wheat. I talked about this the other night. I tried to in regards to what happened on uh, on uh, 7.13. And the ear, the shot to the ear, the ear shot, the shot heard around the world, all that, you know, those kind of storylines. Well, it's Virgo who is depicted as the maiden. She's the one associated with the wheat. Right? So, uh... Yeah, there's a whole bunch of interesting stories around here. Like, the, her father... Her father found out she was pregnant. And assuming it was from an unknown suitor, locked her in a box. And cast it into a river. In other stories, buried, that she's buried. So it's the same deal. It's just as though one of the uh, the uh, the virgins, one, vestal virgins in Rome, if they are discovered to be pregnant, and see that's forbidden, right? So supposedly they were buried. They were buried in a crypt. They were buried underground with with food and water and wine, like a little apartment. Supposedly because they weren't supposed to, it was illegal to bury them in its traditional fashion. There's a lot of interesting stories, but to me they're all tales. They're all telling the same tale. The mystery of the cave, really. The cave of mystery and what's really going on with these women. Once they're impregnated and used to, to deliver, they're carriers the same way they look at the Virgin Mary or at the Virgin Mary as the carrier. She's like the cup of Christ. You see? She's like the uh, the philosopher's stone, the goddess. Because it's inside of her womb that he grows, right? So she's the cup. And inside you might often see that little dragon poking its head up out of the out of the blood-colored wine from time to time. We're just in the cup. A magical little ephemeral dragon-like serpent creature. It represents the magic, right? It represents the magi in the cave. And she is the cave. Her womb is the cave. You see, so it represents the virgin is, is ultimately the child She's the core. We call her the virgin, the virgin goddess. But really, the um, she is the cup. And it's the blood of Christ 
that and the blood and the flesh of Christ that they take at their communions and their sacraments, you see. So this is the focus. It always has been. And it's the main focus with it. The monotheist groups and in the Satanist and other groups as well. The, the youthful, um, the child with that powerful blood. We know about it because they use it for all sorts of things. Uh, it's used in all kinds of women's makeups, products, and skin care treatments from that fetal blood or fetal tissue. Right? And so this has been a big part of the, I guess you could say the benefits of making abortion legal. So that so many people who could afford it could get their hands on a lot of these products that could perhaps potentially increase their lives or their lifespans. And if not, because you still see them dying. But it may give them, uh, it may be one of the things that's most important to the males of the world. Their fertility, their virility. I mean, people have hunted those, have, which animals have been hunted to extinction? Just pursuing this, anything that could give men more virility. To extend the old wealthy man's ability to... Uh, remain virile to be able to still get it on right that's just that's something that you never want to let go of as you get older and it seems that when you have enough money to burn you'll spare no expense i think they hunted the rhinos to extinction the white rhino in pursuit of their horn so they could create talcs and powders and Whatever else would grow back their hair, grow back their balls, all these types of things. That was their hope, apparently. Anyways, so I just wanted to point to some of these things and say that, you know, this is a big part of what was going on on that date. The 713M, the G from the Masons, the Masonic M and the Masonic G. The G is a 7 and the M is 13. You got 713. Do you see the ear of wheat on the side of Virgo here? You see the ear? Do you understand now what, what was being represented on that date? With that ear shot? It's right here. Okay? It's right here. And in the uh, Tauroctony... I don't know if I read that to you guys. Or those of you who saw or know about it, you might know that it was called a toroctomy. Toroctomy is a bull killing. A bull killing. Sacrifice of a bull. A public sacrifice. A public sacrifice in the Mithraeum. And these are the rites of Mithra. Mithras with the bull, right? So what happens is Mithras pulls back the head of the bull by the nostrils and in his right hand he usually holds a knife plunged into the shoulder or the neck of the bull and he looks up. He looks up. He has his arm, one arm raised as if in triumph. Fight, fight, fight. And then he, he's, when he's doing the sacrifice he looks over to his right He's supposedly looking up at the sun while his victim is below, slightly below and to his left, trapped underneath his knee or under his foot, below the dais. So then when he disappears below, after you hear a shot ring out, or several shots, and everybody surrounds him, Maybe 10 people, if it was like my dream. And they take him down to the ground. And while he's down in the ground, there's something going on down there that we cannot see. We're not privy to. When he stands back up in his, in his blue and red Superman colors, he's got his hand over his ear and there you see blood. And it looks like the blood is splashing across his face in the photo in an interesting pattern. Very interesting to me. Little things like that. So, you know, it depends how you want to look at it, but the character that was 
Well, the ones we're told died. One of them's name was Corey. Corey is Corey the maiden. The symbol of the maiden all around. The ear. So, uh, I don't know if it says it on this one, but yeah, on his head, Mithras wears a Phrygian cap. But we, we had a red MAGA cap, didn't we? Like the one worn by Attis, the Phrygian cap. And the tail of the bull appears to end in an ear of wheat. The blood, so the ear, the ear of wheat. And the blood from the wound is sometimes depicted as ears of wheat. The blood from the wound is sometimes depicted as ears of wheat. Or a cluster of grapes. So it's important to note that the ear of wheat in the Virgo constellation do I even have a something with a Virgo? Let me just show you. The ear of wheat in the Virgo constellation is uh, what's well, depicted here, as far as I'm concerned, as a one ear, like a one-eared elephant, like the elephant ear. The Persians eat a uh, pastry, like a donut, which they call an elephant ear. Right? I was hoping I could show you the image of Virgo herself, but for some reason it's not popping up. But if you could see it, you'd, you'd recognize that uh, the ear of wheat is typically shown in Spica. Virgo constellation images. All right. We should find it here somewhere. <laughs> you know, I just saw it the other day. I don't know if they, did they actually clean it from the internet or something? I don't know. Here's a very bad view of it. Down here is typically where the ear, where the ear of wheat is. The ears, the ear of grain, as it's called, could be corn, could be wheat, and that is Spica, the brightest star in Virgo. The ear, the bright star on the side of the head of our Gemini ex-president. Gemini is ruled by Mercury, same as Virgo. So it's a reference to Virgo. So what I'm getting from all these things, aside from the obvious... Uh, Aside from the obvious uh, ritual, that is, this is how they do the rituals. Live in public, and they have to be made to seem as other things. This is how it goes. I don't know whether those people really died, but they both, both have symbolism of a virgin, or Virgo. The poor kid, the poor young man, uh, is a poster child for a virgin. And the other guy's name is literally, the fireman's name, literally means virgin. The core is the maiden, which is the virgin. Here it is. My sister named Karina, so I'm familiar with this. Karina is the diminutive of core. Core is maiden. You can have a male or female core. That's what's interesting, because either way, you got there's something sacred on both and that's that's the person the young person in the bloom of their youth essentially so yeah those are some of the things i thought i would come back and talk about i don't know why they tie into today's date except that you know 815 is a marian dogma date right the uh the dormition of the theotokos the falling asleep of mary now I showed you that there was a pool and that there was a, there was something like a pool, okay? And that was shown on Lodge 49 at the end of the show. That's where our Kurt Russell Jr. character is buried alive. He's struck by lightning and then thunder. Rain starts pouring down and he's suddenly buried alive in the hole he was digging. He was trying to dig a pool. You see him suddenly buried very quickly in the mud. 
and the mud o overtops his face, just like the uh, image of the little Masonic character on uh, the builder character, the Masonic builder character in I Pet Goat, who was likewise buried alive. And as I mentioned, just like the goddess character, the bride from Kill Bill, buried alive. But one thing about all these characters, they seem to come back. And that's interesting because that's, is that what we're talking about right now? A lot of people, a lot of Jason Giorgiani fans out there looking at that like, yeah, the return of Prometheus. He's going to be unchained and come back. He's coming back. He's being let out. And that's what Dr. Mon Hillman was saying in his video that I just pointed out. This meets Satan. He says, every, every 1,000 years I get to come out and play. Mentions the number 93. 93%. The Thelemite greeting. For Aleister Crowley. Waiting for someone to return, you see. I don't know who is exactly sure exactly who this entity is, but I think of it as a Prometheus character. One of the ancient ones, the Titans, the Builders. So I hope that was this video was of some value to somebody. I don't know. It was all over the place, and I don't really know what I'm trying to do exactly here, but I feel like I have to talk about it. I doubt I'll hear it anywhere else. But it would be cool. It would be cool if I, if I do. So I hope that clears up some of it. And you see that there is definitely partial answer to the mystery of uh, 713. Straight up Masonic numbers. 7 is the G of the Masons. Right on the chessboard. Right on the checkerboard, right? Let's just see. Sonic chessboard, Sonic checkerboard. So yeah, you're familiar with the G, of course, and then the M, which is simply M for Mason. And to my way of thinking, you know, M has always been Michigan for me, from growing up there, being born there. So I don't know, I don't know exactly how all these things tie together, but I know that they do. You've got sun and moon in some analyses. The black and white tiles, the movements on the black and white tiles, right? The headstone from the pyramid. All right, guys, that's enough for me tonight. Have a good night. See you next time.